As you know, as a web designer, it's really crucial to think about browser support before using any of the new technologies, like HTML5, CSS3, but fortunately we're kind of secure to use those by now, and now Flexbox also. So let's take a quick look at browser support so that you can see if it's the right choice for your audience. So let's jump right over to caniuse.com, a website you probably know of, and if not, it's a great tool to check out the browser support for all kinds of CSS properties, for example. I can just put in here Flexbox and it will tell you all the browsers here and show you if the property is already supported or not and in which versions of the browser. Now, the most important information here is that we have 79.38% of global support for the Flexbox property by now, where unfortunately some of these nearly 15% are not completely supported yet. And that's because older browsers on Android and also IE 11 uh, make some problems and have some bugs with the Flexbox implementations as of now. So for now it's not perfectly supported but still very widely supported and a great thing to use actually now already. So of course we have our friends down here again, Firefox, Chrome and so on. The support is there, it's all good. So we can use it for all modern browsers basically. Now also HTML5 please, the side right here, also recommends Flexbox can be used. You have major browser support today and the main problems are again Internet Explorer 11 and older Android browsers here, um, which you can support partly with prefixing uh, and we're gonna talk about this right now. So let's talk a little bit about the history of Flexbox and the different specifications that now create this, well, little kind of mess with the different syntaxes you can have for Flexbox and the different browsers that support different kinds or different versions of those specifications. Now, all you need to know about this basically is there have been three major specifications for Flexbox. One has been in 2009, which basically used or intended to use Display Box as the syntax um, which as you know, or as I've mentioned briefly in the previous video, is now Display Flex as down here. Now this is from 2009 and you have your browser prefixes of course you can use to support older browsers like these down here. Um, and then also there has been another specification in 2012, three years later, which intended to use Flexbox as the name. So in this case, the property would read display Flexbox, which was also just a specification in between and has then been replaced by display Flex. Now, apart from the display Flex property, of course, there are many others and you can usually recognize the ones from the 2009 specification because they are prefixed with box. And nowadays you would have prefixes that rather use Flex instead of box. Now I don't want to get into too much detail about this right now. As you may have noticed, this is an article from CSSTricks.com, so you can check this out if you want to, to get some more details on this. But actually we don't need to worry too much about prefixing because there are many great tools out there. And for a local development, I really recommend you just use a very modern browser. Just use a Firefox, Chrome browser, Safari, something like that. So you can check everything out on your local machine. And then you can use a prefixer online or another tool that runs locally to actually get all the prefixes for your code. So you don't actually need to worry about all the different specifications there are and which browser supports or needs which of those. Instead, you can just use the most recent and the official syntax for it and let the rest be done by the machines. All right, so I hope this video was helpful for you to evaluate whether this is the right thing for you. Now the browser support is already very good and it's only gonna become better of course in the future. And I really think Flexbox is the future or part of the future of CSS because it makes many tasks so much easier. And even if you think that it's nothing you wanna use right now, it's still something I think that would be great to learn already and to get the skill and to see what the future holds for CSS. So yeah, this was kind of the basic overview of Flexbox and all the info you need to decide whether you want to use it. And now in the next lecture, we can finally get into more of the code and see how to actually use Flexbox and what you need and what you need for a setup and so on. And it's really minimal. So see you there.